Thank you. And uh, we'll now move to the member questions under the five minute rule. But first, I want to say you're going to see a lot of people come and go. Don't let it worry you. There's other hearings going on. So people go, they'll come back and and so forth. So uh, contrary to what people are seeing and feeling on the ground and the FBI released some data that claims claims violent crimes are going down. We've heard that. It appears that the quality of this data may be off. So, Chief Roach, uh, can you tell us what someone must do to get a third-degree assault charge, and and is this categorized as a violent crime in New York? And uh, are there any other crimes that are no longer being classified as violent? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, so assault third would be uh, anything that causes physical injury. Uh, below assault third would be harassment second. Uh, I believe that reads any shoving, kicking, pushing. But when it comes to assault third, you have to uh, have physical injury. For instance, if someone were to strike somebody and they were to break their nose or, or at least have a black eye, that would be an assault third. Uh, that has been taken out of the violent classification. So that's not considered a violent crime now. Additionally, things like rape third, rape in the third degree is not considered a violent crime now. Uh, so there, there are a slew of different charges that have moved from violent crime categories to the nonviolent crime category. So that may be one reason people think they're down. There are just not as many being included. I believe so. Okay. Uh, as a small business owner myself, I'm all too familiar with challenges of this new crime wave. In December alone, I had two incidents where people stole cars off my uh, auto lot. Uh, it's amazing that this has made its way to a small town called Weatherford, Texas. But we are seeing even more drastic effects in our cities. Mr. Scott, there was a line in your testimony that I thought was especially powerful, and I wanted to repeat it for everyone watching. It went like this. After every crime, when the owner's done picking up the pieces, they ask themselves, is it worth it? When they start answering no, the lights go out, the community gets colder and darker, and the neighborhood becomes less like a place where you want to live. So I think uh, this line resonated with a lot of business owners as they hear that. So, Mr. Scott, can you tell us how crime has fundamentally changed your community in Portland, Oregon, over the last few years? Uh, uh, Chairman Williams, thank you for the question. The, uh, as I mentioned in my testimony, one of the ways, one of the ways it's changed uh, for us is that uh, we ended up closing a formerly uh, very well-performing restaurant in North Portland due to crime and homelessness issues around it. We simply could not get guests to be willing to come into, into the restaurant and eventually even employees. Also, the, the rise in crime has just, has just made it more difficult uh, to operate the restaurant. It becomes more expensive to provide security, to make the guests feel safe. And if the guests and employees don't feel safe, we can't continue with right. the business. Right. Uh, following the October 7th attack on Israel, we've seen reports that anti-Semitic in incidents have increased by nearly 400%. We've heard that earlier. Ms. Rez, your organization, Stop Anti-Semitism, tracks and expresses, uh, exposes these incidents. And we've seen some high-profile businesses being harassed for their religious beliefs, but we all know that there are many more that go unreported. So my question to you is, can you talk about some of the most common forms of harassment that the Jewish businesses and employees are facing and how these business owners and individuals are responding to these hate crimes? Thank you for the question, Chairman. Uh, oftentimes, Jewish business owners are reporting mob-type protests outside of their establishments. This is deterring traffic. Uh, to these establishments, it's causing a direct drop in revenues, and it's subsequently requiring more security measures on these business owners, which again is dropping their bottom line. for your crime is cashless bail. The New York PD provided our committee with 2023 statistics which showed that top 542 repeat criminals accounted for 30% of all New York City retail theft, with over 45% of these individuals being previously convicted of a felony. So uh, our criminal justice system knows uh, which individuals are committing the crimes, but because of politics, we're failing to hold them accountable. So in my brief time I have left, Chief Roach, can you talk about some of the detrimental policies that are tipping the scales in favor of criminals and hurting small businesses owners' ability to work and make a living. Thank you. Yes, I, we get complaints frequently from business owners of, of drug use, loitering, 
Uh, and because of that happening in front of the storefronts or the businesses, uh, people are not patronizing or patronizing the, the, uh, the restaurants, the stores. It's hurting uh, uh, business owners' bottom line. Uh, their revenue is, is shrinking because of it. Well, uh, rape third is not a violent crime in New York State. My time is up. I now recognize the ranking member.